haven't accomplished anything yet, you have no reason to believe that you can actually accomplish things. So what do you do? You give yourself small things to accomplish. As small as they might seem to you, they can be a big deal for some people. Something to be said there about, about staying out of the ranks of the insane. Because if you're, if you're one person and you look at the whole crowd, the crowd's insane. And of course, if you now sit there and go, man, I, you guys are crazy, I can't be part of this, the crowd now turns to you and what do they say about you? You're insane. You're insane. Yeah. And so the best advice that we can give a person is be yourself. Just be yourself. Mm -hmm. Questions? <laughs> <laughs> because well, I mean, you should be yourself, right? Because what you are, like, like when I ask you that question, like, like, what are you? And you can start to list all these characteristics about yourself. Um, um, anybody, so for example, you, you are, you're anxious, right? You're full of that anxiety and, and, and you're, you're self-doubting as well. Yeah. Um, what else are you? Sad. Oh, you're depressed as well? Yeah, you're depressed. Um, oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. Everybody cut up on your, on your journals? Everybody up to where you're supposed to be? Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you're, a, you're a liar? <laughs> what? So you're a liar? You're a procrastinator? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, you're full of shit. You're <laughs> full of shit. <laughs> And, w and the reason that you're full of shit, by the way, is because of your, your, your self-doubt. Also, you're prideful. That's why you're full of shit. Let me make this a subcategory. You're full of shit because you're prideful, and you just can't admit when you're wrong, and, and you can't go and try to make yourself better because you are so full of pride that you can't acknowledge that you need to improve in any way. Um, oh, and also because you have a terrible diet. That's also why you're full of shit. So that's like a little... sleep schedule. Oh, sorry. No, I meant... No, no, no. Like, no, like, no, like, no, like, no sleep schedule. Exactly. I'll put that in brackets if you even have one. By diet, I just mean what you eat. <laughs> not, not that you, you know... You are what you eat. Yeah, not that you discipline yourself, but that you are... Oh, I'm going to show this recording. <laughs> Last time it was not. Um, so, what else are you that you should just be yourself? Question? Oh! You're, you're probably also very... You're also probably biased. And prejudiced in ways. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Brainwashed. Um, brainwashed. Yeah. yeah. Lazy. Narrow-minded. Narrow-minded. Brainwashed by society. Hyper-focusing. Have you ever hyper-focused oh, on what? Scholars, the wrong things. Oh, We're hyper focused on all the wrong things. <laughs> but you know what? You should be yourself. Be yourself. Be yourself. Yeah, be yourself. You say focused on wrong things. And I don't even need to tell you what the wrong things are. You know. You already know what they are. Uh, and whatever the, whatever the wrong things I think you're focused on, you probably think I'm focused on the wrong things. So I'm not going to make a list for you. You make a list of yourself because you know what the wrong things are that you're focused on. You don't need me to come along and tell you anything like that. Where's, I really need one of those posters. I, I need to get one of those posters that says, be yourself. Just ironically, just to put it up, and just go, just be yourself, guys. You know what? You should have a list right next to it. Yeah, and you just have to love yourself, because you're lovable, exactly as you are. You, you adorable little anxious, self-doubting, depressed, lying, <laughs> procrastinating, narrow-minded, <laughs> full of shit, biased, brain, brainwashed, folks on the wrong things, you. <laughs> Dog to a homeless man last week. <laughs> yeah, thank you for telling us. You're, you know, you're a good person. You're so virtuous. Yeah, now you're virtuous too. And now that you've told me about it, I guess you go back to the prideful thing as well. Now we know. Now I know what you are. Yeah. And, and, and some of you are laughing, some of you are crying inside, some of you are looking at me like, you better give us something positive at the end of this. But there's nothing positive at the end of this. Questions, comments, concerns? <laughs> There is something positive in this. Because now you, if you can recognize these things, now you can know what you are. What stoicism is, is it's, it's a way of, it, people oftentimes think of stoicism as, oh, it's a person who's non-emotional. No, it's mastering your emotions. 
because all of these things here come from things that, that are, from, from, it comes from unmastered emotions. It's from letting your emotions run you wild. By the way, letting your intellect run you too wild is also wrong. Because, you know, you're, are, you, are, you, are you guys emotional or are you guys intellectuals? Yes. Good man. You should be both. You should be both. Let your heart tell you what you want. Let your intellect tell you how to get it and the proper way to go about it. <clears throat> what are you anxious about? I know, the list could go on. But you know, if you're anxious about, like yesterday, somebody in my, one of my classes was talking about cl uh, the climate crisis. Um, I can't say too much. Damn it, I should have said it was someone from last year, then I could have told you the story. And then, I, just, I worry that sometimes you guys will know who the people are. I should have just told you, oh yeah, this was a student from like six years ago, which I sometimes do, even though the student's like sitting in the room. I'll still say, ah, someone from six years ago. Um, I'll just leave it at that. I have a student in my, one of my classes who's, who's really anxious about the, about the environment. She was going off yesterday about the climate crisis. And I made it, oh no, stop, I won't say that. Remind me later, I'll tell you that one. That one's funny. Anyway, so she's, a, so she's anxious about something. Um, can she control the environment? No. No. What can she control? How she impacts it. How she impacts it, yeah, exactly. So you know what, I guess I'll just go ahead and recycle this. You can't recycle and go, I want to recycle this. But the world's melting and we're all going to die. Of course you're going to be anxious. That's one of the things that concerns me with, with you guys. Um, social media. I don't mean social media. You know what I mean by that when I say this? Yeah. It isn't just you're on your phones all the time. Get your goddamn phones away. That's not what I'm saying. The problem is that you have a steady feed of constant bad news that hits you all the time. When I was a kid, <clears throat> when I was a child, you walk out of the house and there might be like 20 minutes in the morning if my parents were listening to the news, we're out here what was going on in the world and like, you know, a war over in Bosnia. And you'd be like, huh, Bosnia, that sounds like a type of soup. And you'd walk out and you'd go to, and you'd go to school and then, then we would be in here all day. There wasn't like a constant stream of bad news going, bless you. There wasn't a constant stream of bad news and people telling me about political causes and all of this anxiety provoking stuff hitting me 24-7 the way that it hits you guys. So yeah, no, no, worry, you know, no surprise that you're anxious. So what could you do? You can do what you can do. And that's about it. And as much as people tell you, you should be doing more, shut up. They should be doing less, like talking. And they're just talking to you about how you should be doing more. They should be doing less of that. You know, can, you, can you get over your self-doubt? Yeah. Yeah. Anybody know how to overcome self-doubt? Anybody know how to, how, to, how to gain confidence? Yeah. Um, to gain confidence is kind of to just gain security of yourself. You know? How? That's what Wait, I asked. Let me, How? Let me start writing it down. Guys. I can tell you. <laughs> tell us. I will tell you. <laughs> you can write this down if you want. Three words. Clean your room. <laughs> I don't have a room. I don't have a room. Clean your space. Right. Clean your space. I mean that, by the way. Clean your backpack. Why? What's, think about the one thing in your life that you have complete control over. Maybe it's not your room. Maybe you share your room with somebody. Maybe it's not your space because you have to share it with multiple people. But you have a backpack. Clean your backpack. Keep it organized. Why? Because if you can't, if you can't, if you can't clean your backpack, if you can't keep your backpack organized, do you really think that you should be out telling the rest of the world how to run its, its political economic structures? You're not ready to, to handle big things until you can handle small things. But here's the beauty of it. Once you realize, huh, my backpack used to be a mess, if I put my mind to it, I can actually keep my backpack organized. My papers where they're supposed to be. In classes, everything's organized. Huh, that's a little tiny win right there. But here's what you just proved to yourself. Not just told yourself, but proved to yourself. You can actually be successful in something that you set your mind to. Something small. Huh, if I can keep my backpack clean, you know what I'm trying to do now? I'm going to make my bed every morning or fold up my blankets if I don't have a bed, or whatever. And then if you can do that every morning, wake up, as easy as, as, as it is, you make your bed. And a funny thing will happen too, by the way. You might start to sleep differently. You might be like, oh, in the morning I have to rush, so I have to just fix the, fix the covers. So maybe that means that when you go to bed at night, you're going to be careful about how you lie down, not just be like, oh, it's okay, just toss everything everywhere, because you know you're going to have to clean it in the morning. Once you realize, I'm going to have to take care of this tomorrow, you might take better care of it today. And then you make your bed, and if you can clean your room, well, now what you can do is start to branch out. Can you keep the bathroom cleaned too? <sighs> My brother uses the bathroom. Okay, so now you can keep it clean, even though there's two of you who are using it. I mean, you, 
you, you, people go into politics all the time. They try to they try to save a country, don't they? Oh, but there's 300 and, you know 20 million other people. Then if you can't keep a bathroom clean with one other person, you're not ready to keep a community clean with 10,000 other people. And that doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. It just means you teach yourself how to do it. You have to give yourself small goals, and then you have, they have to be attainable, and then you have to achieve them. And then you have to build on top of them, because you have to prove to yourself. Like if I said to you guys, um, you can do anything. You can change the world. It's like, yeah. And you can hear that up here, but do you believe it? No. Why not? You shouldn't believe it. Because if you haven't accomplished anything yet, you have no reason to believe that you can actually accomplish things. So what do you do? You give yourself small things to accomplish. As small as they might seem to you, they can be a big deal for some people. For some people I've known, and I know we say this all the time, but I mean this in the literal sense. There's a person I know who, who suffers from this incredible depression. You'd never know it from talking to them. This person always seems jovial. They're always joking around. Part of, part, uh, part of her problem is that she's too damn smart, maybe. And much learning has, has made her mad. And I, I've known her for a very long time. And she lays in bed, and most mornings, the reason that she says that she has a job is because that's the reason that she gets out of bed in the morning. If she didn't have a job, she would just sit there and wither and just die from depression, probably. You know, it's one of those people that you're almost surprised that they haven't already died from depression, killed themselves. But she gives herself these little tiny things to do because it gets her up. And then at the end of the day, and you know, people tell her she's a remarkable person. Does she believe it? No. Nope. Self doubt. <laughs> Because of the anxiety and the depression that, that goes along with it, you know? So, it's always those folks you never even recognize. And so, you have to give yourself small things to accomplish. And sometimes for some people, getting out of bed in the morning is an accomplishment. Now, once you're out of bed, what do you do? Take a shower. <laughs> you're laying in your bed all day. All day. <laughs> you know, go, go take a shower. Now you're clean, and you feel differently about yourself. You guys ever, you ever sick, and you're laying in bed feeling miserable? Feeling sorry for yourself? <laughs> and then you go up and you take a shower and all of a sudden you're ready to you, know, you feel much better maybe you go run a marathon or something but you feel better about yourself that's the thing you accomplish little things you feel better about yourself this whole time that I'm talking to you guys um, you know you could be writing some people suddenly go like oh my god you talk so long why? I like hearing my own voice if I liked hearing my own voice I would just be sitting at home talking to myself you know if I wanted to hear my own voice, well, I mean, I'd, I'd get off the meds, right? But no, instead I come in here and I talk to you. Thank you. That's a joke. It's a schizophrenic joke. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Hearing the voices? Come on. Whatever. You have to explain a joke. It's not funny, I suppose. Did you finish? Yeah. How'd you finish so fast? Were you, were you writing while I was talking? Yeah. Holy shit. The man took the time and finished the assignment while I was talking. He took the time I was giving you right now while I'm giving you ideas and actually did it. You're a goddamn genius, Gump. But how are you doing? Yeah, but that's the thing. Like, I, I, I do talk to you, so I give you time to do these things. And then once you're done with it, it's like, I'm done. And then you know how some people are running around the night before and like sending each other pictures of their journals and like just, you know, scan will never know. And then the night before these things are due and then you're rushing in like, well, what, what time do you leave on Friday so I can turn it in? This dude, like, right now, the drills are due, you go, later on, Sian, you walk out. He's dealt with the anxiety because he's given himself the small task of finishing this one thing every day that's completely doable. You know it's doable because he just did it. And a few of you I know who do it. So you know it's doable. You can do it. And, if you, and, and me saying, you're sitting here going, you can do it. It's like, oh, yeah, I know I could. No, you don't. You haven't. You have no reason to believe it. Give yourself little things to do so that you can accomplish little things. And then you're going to find yourself in life with big, giant tasks to do. Imagine if you take 18-year-old Elon Musk and you put him in charge of, of SpaceX. How do you think he runs that place? Horribly. Of course. He has to be successful with small things. And all of a sudden, you get these big, giant projects to do. And you're ready to do them. You have good, and you have good reason to be confident. Because you've been successful in the little things so far. You know? That's how you overcome these things. And so, no. You, you shouldn't just be yourself. You should, be, you should be better than your present self. Look for something more because you could be better than what you presently are. You meet people who are, you know, some of, um, sometimes I describe you guys to other people and I'll say, oh yeah, this one student, you know, he's 15 going on 40. You know what I mean by this? 
And, I tell, uh, and other people I know, I'll say, oh yeah, they're 15, I'm sorry, they're 40 going on nine. You know, you don't want to be 40 years old going on nine. And by the way, that goes back to what we were talking about the last semester with childhood trauma. That's how you can overcome that thing as well. You approach it not as the wounded nine-year-old you were when these things happened to you. You approach them as the, the person who's accomplished some, some good things, who's overcoming these things when you're in your you know, late teens, early 20s, early 30s. You approach it as that person, not the person who was wounded. The person who's able to defend themselves and stand up. That's what you want to be in life. You want to be that person that people can turn to. Shit, take that back. You want to be the person that you can turn to. So that you don't have to turn to other people. It's okay to, because people need help once in a while. You don't want to be that person who never takes help. You don't want to be that person who's always asking for help. Or who always needs help. You want to be the person kind of in the middle. And that way, you can give help to others. You know, that's how you overcome these things. And so, no, don't, don't just be yourself. You're, be better. Because you can be. And you know this. You don't need me to tell you this. Maybe you just need someone to, to frame it a certain way. I don't know. Questions? Comments? Concerns? Complaints? Criticisms? Critiques? <clears throat> How that we've accomplished this? Do you think that we can accomplish this trick of scandal? <laughs> there is no Church of Scanlon. That's the first rule yes. of the Church of Scanlon. We do not talk about the Church of Scanlon. 